Okay, the last big thing I want to show you is how to replace parts of an existing network with different logic. Well, what we're doing here is dividing by number of segments. So I can only choose whole numbers. It's either 36 or 37 or 38, but I can divide into 37.4 segments. So between any two states, there is a large jump in, in my arcs. I can replace this logic with a divide length component, which divides not based on number of segments, but divides based on segment length. I can pick the same curve and make a new slider, which varies somewhere in between 0 0.5 and say 20. Oh, 0 0.5 and 20. Okay, it's a bit hard to see because we now have both these points and those points. Uh, I will hide this component, preview off, and I'll also hide these components. Uh, if you press space, by the way, you can open the, the menu, which, which has allows you to disable and enable components, hide and show components, big data, and so forth. So quickly just select them all, press space, and hide them all. So now we're only seeing the points in this component. And we can change this number smoothly and actually have our points change over time very smoothly. And I can even zoom in and change the slider on a sort of sub-pixel, if you want, accuracy. So I can change it very, very accurately and very slowly move our, my points further apart. OK, so now instead of this, instead of these points here, Let's switch it all back on again. Instead of these points, I don't want to use those points. And I could just go in here and rewire everything to the new bit, but that's a lot of work, and that's also very boring work. There's a better way to take a bunch of wires and move them from one part, from one output to a different output. When my cursor is close to this component, you can see that, the, that there's this little uh, wire symbol next to it. If I press control, it becomes red. Is, is that visible to people? It's very small, maybe not. But when it's red, I can draw a new wire over an existing wire and remove that wire. If I press shift, I can add more than one wire. For example, by default, if I just make a new wire like this, it overrides the old wire. If I don't want that, I can hold shift and actually make sure that there's more, more than, than one wire going into an input component. So let's undo that. If I press both control and shift, I can take all of these wires, disconnect them, and move them into this output here. Let's delete that. And now we have replaced part of our algorithm with fairly minimal effort to be to give us more control over exactly how these arcs behave. OK, to recap, a grasshopper algorithm is, consists of components, uh, parameters, either input parameters, output parameters, or floating parameters, like these. A parameter icon is always a black hexagon with something inside of it. And if you hover over here, you can see that it's a black hexagon with a curve symbol and a black hexagon with a number in it. So these are all parameters. And components actually do stuff. Parameters remember stuff. A component icon is just a drawing without a border, without a hexagon or a rectangle. There are wires which share information between parameters. And there's a bunch of special objects, such as sliders or gradients, for example, if you want to make a gradient. Or, well, there's a whole bunch. There's the control knobs, if you want a slider which goes around and on and around. And these are all sort of special objects that are not, that are not really parameters or components. But they, can, they, they are mostly here to make it easy to change data. Okay, in 
In random, we have those three curves. In Grasshopper, we have all our arcs. And if you want those arcs to be, become part of our Rhino file, uh, we have to bake them. That's the word we use. Uh, geometry is baked. And that'll turn it from Grasshopper geometry into Rhino geometry. So if I select this object and select Bake, I can choose to bake it to the default layer or layer 1. And if I, if I close Grasshopper, the geometry is actually there in Rhino. I can select it, I can export it, I can use it further downstream for operations. And it can be rendered. Uh, I think this might be a good time for more questions. Do we have anything good, Mary? Uh, sometimes somebody sends you a file or, or you did download one and you're not, not sure where to find this component, right? I mean, you know, you know what it's called, pool point. So you, you can make it by just typing in pool and then find pool point. But if you want to know where on the toolbar this thing was, you can press Control and Alt, which will change your cursor into one of those little uh, information symbols. And then if you click on the component, it tells you exactly which tab and which panel that object was found in. So you have two arrows and one circle. And arc is there. Divide length is actually visible only on drop down. It's not visible in the tab itself. So that is quite a useful tool if you want to know where something is located. If you want to find, <laughs> uh, if, if you, if you, if, if you have, have a larger file and you want to find components in your file, for example, uh, find a divide component. Well, now it's obvious, right, because it, it all fits on one screen. But if it's a really big file and you're, and you're way zoomed out and, and you're not, not sure where they are, you can also search for divide components inside your active document. If you go into Edit and Find, or F3, you can start typing divide, and it actually tells you all the components which have this word in their name. It draws you a circle around it as well, and it tells you with the arrow where it is. So as long as the window moves around, it keeps pointing towards the result. If I search for pool, there's actually two answers. There's one here and one over there. And if you click on these objects, they actually move the relevant component next to the, to the item. So if I want to find this one, it moves the canvas to That's a, uh, a pretty good way to find stuff in a, in a big file. All right, the, yes. If you right click on the, on the canvas, you get a regular menu with a bunch of options. If you middle click with, with, with a scroll wheel or use spacebar, you get the, this menu here, which has the exact same options. It's just sort of easier to access in all directions. So if I say want want to hide this component quickly, I could just middle click on it, which selects it, and then go off here to hide the, the, the preview for this component, which is slightly less work than opening the menu, finding it, and clicking it maybe. So middle mouse button or spacebar opens up this menu, which has a bunch of tools that sometimes are available, sometimes are not available. If nothing is selected, then hiding and enabling and baking doesn't work. But you can still choose some other things that are that might be useful. So there, there's find is in here. Uh, there's, there's navigate. If you have a very large file, you can use navigate to sort of find your way around quickly in a, in a sort of zoomed out view. But these are all, these, these are not, not really very important. It's mostly preview on off and enabled on off, which are useful useful tools. Bake. bake is even quicker. Uh, if you select something and press the insert key, it will bake it directly without any, without any interface. So that baked my arcs just by pressing insert.